can write an interesting thing on Facebook, something for my students, and 4,000 people will get it, ignore what I said to challenge me on something, and then lose every battle because I'm here. If you think you're bad, great. But if you want to prove it, come on down to, to Bull and Buddha. Or come Tuesday night to my session. Then you won't be in back of a computer with the fingers typing, saying what you're going to do, and be 100 miles away because you, you, most cases you're not 100 miles away. Most cases you could be sitting in California, which is a good eight-hour ride on, a, on, a, on an airplane, talking a whole lot of stuff. Come down into the Talmud session, set your drums up, play my drums, I don't mind. But when you fall on your butt, there's no excuse. And the video's going up. So the world's going to see that you're talking loud and saying nothing right on the internet when I got you in this house. And I might go in my office when you're playing bad. And when you're playing bad, you can't blame me because I did my 60 years of playing. And I'm trying to give this thing away. You're going to have to blame yourself. There's not going to be nobody to blame but yourself. And then basically, in, in little words, you're doing what James Brown said. You're talking loud and saying nothing. And that's my biggest, I wouldn't say my biggest problem, but it does worry me because it don't take no 13 and 14 years to learn how to play the blues. People have done it in a day. So I just say, and I know a lot of young people not going to like what I say because it seems like I'm picking on you, but I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying when you're in a room with some masters that have already done 50 or 60 years and you're 30 years old coming with that, you can't play no more than 30 years because that's all you lived. So I'm saying be respectful to the masters. When Max Roach was walking around earth and I went to see him at 50 years old, I was like a kid in the candy store sitting in front of the bass drum. Everything Max said, I was listening to every word. Whatever he said, I'm listening to every word. And then when I left him, I put it in practice so I could get better. That's what I'm laying on. The young boys today, they talk a lot of stuff. And when you invite them to a show, they're always doing something else. Oh, I can't come that night. I got to go over here. Oh, I can't come that night. Uh, I'm going over here with my wife. You're just making excuses for yourself. Because when the opportunity comes for you to sit down and break bread with the masters, what do you give up? Absolutely nothing. Say it again, y'all. It's, it's, it, it, just, it just bothers me that... that that people come in my house and they think they rub and show us with me and they talk a whole lot of stuff that they think I want to hear. Listen, y'all, you do the same thing on Facebook. You don't have to say anything nice to me. I mean, I'm going to get along for, for right now to the rest of my life until I pass away. I know the blues. I know the drums. I'm trained to do that. Don't come with the chip on your shoulder like you're really going to do something. I have one boy in here. He wasn't playing no bass drum pedal. So I thought I'd tell him. I opened this door right here, which is Andrew's studio. I opened the door. I went in so that I was standing in the back of the drum. Because I could hear from the front he wasn't playing no bass drum. And if you're not playing no bass drum, you ain't got no march. That's why you like the masters. Elvin's got a strong march. Philly Joe's got a strong march. Max has got a strong march. Lewis Hayes has got a strong march. Andrew Little Surreal's got a strong march. Joe Chambers has got a strong march. Young boys, because they don't hear the bass drum and they don't have sense enough to understand that it's feathering, you're not letting the bass drum beater come a mile off the head. You're holding it very close. So the bass drum's very light. I've got videos up. Got 199 it got 299 hits. No, it's got 999 hits on it. Playing the bass drum. Young boys would rather don't learn the bass drum. And then they don't have any march. And when you play the cymbal, the cymbal's going to expand so much that it's going to get lost in the music. When you put the bass drum.
bitch girl morning. You give the symbol direction. And the symbol cannot expand till it loses its content. Now, Al Foster, one of the greatest drummers in the world and a great friend of mine, he didn't hear Max them playing no bass drum neither. So, he taught himself. He started working with no bass drum, and he did it. He didn't go to his teach and ask him, well, when do you think I'm going to make it? He worked for 20 years with no bass drum, and then he got old enough to go to where Max and them were. He stood in the back of them, and he realized, oh, mess. I haven't been playing the bass drum, and Max is playing bass drum. So he went in Downbeat Magazine, and he said, nobody listened to me. I played wrong for 20 years. Max is playing bass drum. And then he retrained himself into what he is today, one of the greatest drummers in the world. Now, why didn't they learn that? Because they were running their mouth. They were trying to be too important. And they didn't hear what the master said. So, Al Foster, I praise him because he did it wrong. He went and he corrected his wrong. He went and published magazine Downbeat, which was the biggest magazine of my early days. He went in that magazine and he told people, I did it wrong. Max was playing bass drum. He retrained himself. And now he's, he's one of the greatest drummers in the world. And a nice guy. I say that the young people need to unite back with these guys. And there's nothing wrong with hip-hop. This last video that I did, I'm playing funk all night. And you think, well, that's Boogaloo. He's a jazz drummer. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a musician. I play everything. And I play it right. And that's all I'm asking. I'm not asking you to come over here and rub shoulders with me or give me a big kiss and a big hug and, and say a whole lot of pretty flowery words that you think I want to hear. I'm really concerned with the young people's life because these young people, I have one student in my stable who actually plays the right thing. His name is Andrew Greeny. I'm going to say his name. He's been with me 12 years, and if I cough, if he's not even coming to the house, he'll ride through town and call me up. Boogaloo, you need anything from the store? He knows I need something. Sometimes I tell him I don't need something. Most times I tell him I don't need nothing. But he'll say, you want a sandwich? He'll start suggesting things. You want a sandwich? You want this? You want that? And then I'll finally say yes, and he'll get it for me. And he'll bring all the groceries to the house, and I don't have to get up and do anything. Why? I'm teaching this man the drums. He learned feathering. He mastered it. He, he couldn't read that good. I showed him to read, and I said, you need to do eight pages in the syncopation book. He did eight pages every day after he worked eight hours, and he was 28 years old then. So when you think you're doing something, and you can't play the blues, and you don't know how to play the cymbal, and you ain't got no good grip, think about Andrew Greeny, 28 years old, the sort of opportunity of living with somebody that can play my level. And my level ain't no joke. I play with George Brave every Monday night or once a month on Monday night at Fat Cats. We're the A band. The B band comes on after us and they have to work to 4 o'clock in the morning for a lot less money than I'm getting. And George got rid of me. He tried a few drummers. He rehearsed them and they didn't, they didn't do no satisfaction. So he had to call me back. So I'm back. And the band sounds better than ever. Come down to Fat Cat. Hang out with me. Let me know you're in the house. Don't sit there like I'm supposed to know you and you over in the corner and can't play the blues and you expect me to get up from the drums and come over exactly where you at. Get off of the BS. And get on the real thing. This is all I'm asking. I don't want anything from you. If you had a million dollars, you wouldn't give it to me. If you had $100, you wouldn't give it to me. I'm not asking for anything. I have a show every Tuesday, and it's always the masters. Because I'm not going to get no kids to play with me because they get stuck. So I get the masters so we can flow right through. I've got my own 48-track studio. I've got my own 24-track studio. I mix everything, and Andrew Greeny masters it. I've got everything right inside this house that I need, and i got a computer in every part of the house except the bathroom and the kitchen. So this is an information center if you want to use it for that. Y'all go down to the library. It's great, but you better have a pair of earphones. You're not going to be able to talk loud in that library and run the computer. This is the place where you run the computer and talk loud. But I've got one student.
student that actually knows what I'm talking about and 40 or 50 who don't know anything and haven't learned anything. So in the end, who's really got a problem? I don't think it's people like myself that have done this in the way life presents itself to you. It throws you a lot of different curveballs. There's a lot of up and downs. But in the up and downs and big old curveballs that life throws you, I've been doing this thing from zero years old to 61. And in a month or so, I'll be 62 years old still playing this music. So when you throw your chest out and put the chip on your shoulder, remember, when you knock that chip off my shoulder, it's like a telephone pole was on my arm. And when you hit that telephone pole, it just don't fall off. What might happen is you might crack your hand and foot and everything else trying to kick at it because that telephone pole don't move. Ain't no sense in trying to beat me up. What you should do is take the word beat me up out. Take the word I'm going to go against the establishment out. Take, take the chip off your shoulder that you're some kind of force to be reckoned with in this music. Take that out. Change your attitude and study with these masters. Because it doesn't make any sense to me. You get $20,000, you go to school to rub shoulders with the masters. But I got the same masters in my house. And you come here, you're sitting in the kitchen, drinking up, trying to smoke as many cigarettes as you can. And talking about the activities that you did all week. And then when I said, well, damn, they said the jam session was good here. Damn, I better go over there. Maybe they got something. When I go over there, everybody's in the sandbox. You're playing with sand and blocks. And you can't even write. You don't even know how to make an A on the alphabet. You can't play anything. And you expect Marvin Boogaloo Smith. And I go back to Bradford Marcellus. They said Bradford Marcellus. It's right on the internet. Everybody can get it. It's Bradford Marcellus on students. And this is his words. What have you learned from your students? He said, what I've learned from my students is that my students are full of shit. They just want somebody to blow smoke up their ass and tell them how wonderful they sound and how good they are. Meanwhile, they can't play shit. Now, I said it. I'm Marvin Boogaloo Smith and Bradford Marcellus said it. Now, when Bradford says this what I said, you believe him, but when I say it, because I haven't made a million dollars like Bradford, you don't believe it, but it's the same thing.